the family wanted to go and see the McMichael Gallery uh, uh, this last week. So we went up on Thursday and uh, took a tour of the collection and then saw their uh, featured artists or guest artists, uh, um, uh, Marcel Duzuma, I think it is, DZ. A N A. Um, sorry, I, uh, I, I every time I hear it, I forget how to pronounce it. Anyhow, I know this artist from my earliest days, back around to 1998 and 2000, when I was re-entering the art scene uh, and would tr visit Toronto galleries. He was one of the guys on Queen Street. Now I think it was Catherine. Uh, Malhern uh, Gallery uh, on Queen Street, but it may have been the Petro Gallery or Artcore. Um, I really can't remember. It was, I remember, definitely have a clear re recollection of the gallery itself and uh, its location on Queen Street, but I can't quite remember the name of the gallery. Um, anyhow, he was, uh, even at that time, he was sort of the hot big Canadian artist and he had just graduated from uh, OCA, I believe OCA, um, uh, it might have been Seneca, but uh, he just had graduated from school and he had these very whimsical uh, characters, you know, rain, people with reindeer heads uh, or mask faces, this sort of thing, this sort of fairy tale or hands on Gretel sort of a motif and he did drawings and which were still even today are very unusual for most artists because you know for the amount of work you you put the same amount of work in really uh, for complex drawings as you might for a painting and uh but you can't ask as much in sales and i remember going into the gallery and seeing his uh, work in very small pieces like they were no bigger than really your cell phone and they were running for i, I think 120 i want to say 125 but it may have been 250 dollars per drawing and you know given this is now over 20 years ago that was a lot of money for a very small like even today, uh, $125 for a small drawing like that would would be exceptional for I think for most people walking into a, a gallery. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was I was quite shocked and uh, quite shocked and depressed because I had um, I, I had been trying to get my work shown in Hamilton and at the time James Street North that was not the art district that it was at the time. There really was only Hamilton Inc. And um, I forget what they called it at the time, but it was Gallery on the Bay. There's a, a doctor or something who, who bought um, an old um, industrial administration office and had uh, converted it into a uh, live gallery space and him and his partner uh, uh created this huge beautiful space but it was very more wallpaper decorative kind of art run not rather serious art so the problem i had had was that the the executive director of the hamilton inc at the time was in my opinion aiming for a curator job somewhere and so the only people he would show were conceptual abstract artists who were basically from somewhere else in the country or for the u.s and if you're a local artist well the hamilton inc was almost the last place you could go it wasn't like the art gallery of hamilton or mcmaster was going to be any more helpful because again they were trying to show international and national artists so for the local artists you were sort of out of luck and um, so there was no opportunities there and I was trying to figure out how I was going to do this like really the the traditional method would be you go to the gallery openings in Toronto you get to know the um, the owner of the gallery 
through chatting them up over multiple occasions, someday he finds out you're an artist and then says, hey, let me see your work. And then he falls in love with it and gives you a show. And then if you're lucky enough to sell pieces during that show, you might get invited back. But that required a lot of visiting of galleries. And it's not like you put all your bets on one gallery. You'd have to do multiple galleries. So that means every month you'd be going to multiple openings. Uh, the openings would start at seven o'clock on a Thursday night. And by the time you get back to Hamilton, it'd be around midnight if you're taking the, and, uh, the go bus because I wasn't driving at the time. So the barriers were quite substantial and the, the only option is to move to Toronto and then that has its own sets of problems. So it was really in a box and uh, one of my friends uh, or one of the artists uh, I've commissioned her to do work, we share swap stories about this because she was uh, entering the art market about the same time as I was. She was a much better artist and she had had her, she both done her BFA and MFA and gone over to Scotland to do um, uh, some post-grad work and very skilled realistic artist and she had the same problems that I was having. I didn't find out this two years later but she did get a show, a very impressive show actually at Hamilton Inc. But uh, she, uh, you know, she only got in there because of her association with the master. So, you know, it wasn't only me, uh, it was many other artists and eventually there was a rebellion and the members basically say, you know, we're paying a good chunk of the operating costs. Uh, we need to have some space and show. So now the, the Hamilton Inc. has two spaces, basically uh, a space, the larger space is dedicated to national and international, uh, national and regional artists who come in and show, which is important when you're, you're, you know, I, I would want that too. I would want to go to Montreal or Toronto or Vancouver, be able to show my work before maybe breaking into commercial gallery. So it's not, it's not an unreasonable um, thing to do, but the problem is you still have to start somewhere. And if your local uh, artist cooperative is not supporting you, then who will? Uh, so and now, now they have a second space which members can show. I believe they're um, the last time I looked, you 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 can show once every two or three years in that space. So I've never taken a, advantage of that, but it's something I should actually start working to. So Zom uh, Dzom, if I'm saying it correctly, uh, has this beautiful st uh, show at uh, at um, uh, McMichael. Uh, gallery and um, and his uh, really interesting stuff. Uh, um, it's not my taste, uh, but I do like the complexity of it. And he's done and the color, his use of color is quite fantastic. So it's a really quite quite a good uh, pieces. Just not my taste actually. But you know, like even the small one, there was these one foot by one foot square drawings, uh, ink drawings. And um, uh, David was a uh, swarmer in New York. Uh, again, this, apologies if I'm mispronouncing the gallery's name. His current pricing on the, his uh, Massar's, uh, Massar's work is a sixteen dollars to $18,000 for paper drawings, which uh, paper and ink drawings, which is quite a uh, quite an amazing sum if you think about it for, you know, it's not paintings, these are just drawings uh, with ink or acrylic uh, on paper. Uh, and no matter how well done, that is still a, a sizable show. Now that is, David Swarmer is a mega gallery. And you have galleries, several galleries around the world. So that's at the very peak of the game. But uh, yeah, so it brought the, some painful memories back. It still creates, I still, to this day, still have the problem of how do you, in a small market, which is Canada, in sort of the backwaters, which is anywhere outside of Vancouver, Toronto, or Montreal, break into the art scene. Um, Marcel uh, came out of Winnipeg. He um, created a group of artists called the Royal Academy or something like that. And 
they caught on as a group and then that caught got the attention of Charles Gowris who then brought them there and, and one of those Catherine Gowris Catherine had ties to uh, New York galleries. I think she had a New York gallery at the time. Now, I believe that's a chain. There may have been another gallery, gallerist who was doing it. I've tried to check uh, his re uh, CV and I don't, all that sort of early day stuff has been whittled down to the most essential big shows, not necessarily the galleries you first showed at when you're struggling and just starting out. Uh, but I believe that was sort of the feet, the, 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 the ladder. He uh, got together with a group of artists in Winnipeg. They caught attention. The attention got picked up uh, there. The group got picked up by Toronto Galleries. Some of those Toronto Galleries had links to New York. And then that led to the introduction into the New York scene. And David Warner, who basically from about 2004 onwards, started representing him in group shows and eventually in solo shows because he was selling very well. So that was sort of the chain event. And really, if you have any hope of getting ahead, that is somehow you have to follow something similar to that. How that's going to happen to me, I do not know. That's I still my ambition. I'm, I know I'm cuckoo. It's never going to happen, but you know, one can dream. So anyhow, that's what I did this week. I hope everyone had a good uh, time over the holidays and I would like to wish and everyone had a good new year. Uh, I hope 2024 is best for all of us. So till next time, take care. Bye.